Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the creepy side of Deltarune Chapter 2. While much of Deltarune is comedic in tone, and fairly light-hearted, much like Toby Fox's previous work Undertale, there are plenty of dark secrets and disturbing sequences hidden beneath its seemingly friendly surface layer. Over the next few videos, we'll be looking into these creepy secrets and our coverage begins today with a guide to unlocking an unsettling boss encounter known as Spamton Neo. This video will act as a step-by-step -step guide to accessing this creepy character, a full playthrough of the fight itself, both pacifist and no mercy endings, as well as a brief theory as to who Spamton actually is. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. In order to unlock the boss fight itself, we must first complete a number of steps, and these begin in the Cyber Fields area near the beginning of our adventure. After beating the Queen at our Arcade Machine minigame, you will come to a fork in the road. Heading straight up leads players to a meeting with a strange character shaped like a mouse cursor arrow. This mysterious figure introduces himself as the Hacker and requests Chris and his friends to locate three blue check marks. These blue check marks are hidden throughout Cyber Field. The first can be located here when opening this treasure chest. The second and third are located at the top of the two leftmost teacup rides before we head up to face the Robots Trio mini-boss. The second tick is easy enough to nab, simply ride the teacups all the way to the top without missing an arrow icon and you'll find it stashed inside this box. The third and final check mark is a little trickier. Ride the teacups to the top of the leftmost pillar, and we are greeted by a giant keyboard with a series of letters displayed above. These must be typed out in order, and the correct method can be seen on screen at the moment. Once the letters have been input, the check mark is gifted in return, so let's head back to the mysterious hacker. The hacker, thrilled with the check marks, tells us that he will now move into the city and meet us once again in the Queen's Mansion, but for the time being, he simply puts on a firework display for the trio. Before reaching the Queen's Mansion, Chris runs into a very unhinged character living in a dumpster known as Spamton. He seems to be some kind of washed up salesman who is infected with a malicious code, causing him to often speak in garbled sentences. However, Spamton is quite literally key to everything to come, and during our first encounter with him, we must ensure Chris beats him peacefully using axe rather than violence. So when facing Spamton, accept his deals and be sure to act as a pacifist. If done correctly, after the battle closes, Spamton will deliver a sinister invitation to the player. I'll be waiting at my homemade storefront site in the trash area closed for repairs. Come alone. After winning Spamton's trust, we must continue our adventure and proceed to the Queen's Mansion. Inside, we fight a mini-boss known as Task Manager, and after beating her, we reach an area with a busy main road. In order to cross this road, we must hit every button in sequence before the traffic speeds back up again. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to get this right, but if done correctly, we discover a secret path leading to a hidden room full of statues. Inside this room, just as promised, we find the hacker pacing back and forth. The hacker tells us he has a feeling a secret back door is hidden somewhere within this room, and sure enough there is. We can locate it by closely watching the hacker as he walks around. At a certain point, his form changes from an arrow to a pointy hand. 
interact with a switch on the ground here, and a secret passageway opens in the middle of the room. Proceed through this passageway and we come to a digital key lock. The lock prevents us from crossing, and so at this point it's time to take up our good friend Spanton on his offer and travel back to the trash zone via the fast access door located in the mansion entranceway. This is where things begin to get creepy. At the far side of the trash zone we find a hole in the wall, and inside an ominous doorway which only Chris may enter. The others comment how this place feels creepy and seem unsettled just standing around. On the other side of the door we meet Spanton G Spanton once more. This is his shop. Spanton tells Chris about a great deal that is waiting in the deep abyss of the Queen's Mansion, a heaven piercing body. If we choose to proceed then Spanton offers to sell us the key to unlock the encrypted pathway in the mansion. Prices for this key constantly fluctuate, so be sure to pick it up for a good deal. Once back at the mansion, unlock the encryption with the key gen Spanton provided, and we discover yet another door that only Chris may enter. On the other side of this door, things quickly become very ominous. The music is low and eerie, this place seems abandoned and in ruin. Eventually, after navigating past a series of traps, Chris reaches a switch which lifts the force field blocking our path to the east of this underground tunnel system. In order to return to the surface, a deadly teacup ride must be taken. This is very difficult to complete as we don't get much time to react to the oncoming laser beams and must dodge them perfectly in order to safely return to the surface. Upon returning to the save area, Chris can now make his way down to the previously blocked off path to the right. Venturing down this path leads to an abandoned railroad with two rooms. Head to the far room, and inside we encounter a highly creepy sight indeed, the remnants of a giant robot who has long fallen into disrepair. Chris removes the empty disc from inside this rusty old machine, and the next step is to leave this creepy area for a slightly less creepy one as we revisit Spamton at his shop. Spamton is very excited and asks us to hand over the disc and transfer his code onto it. We are warned that by beginning this transfer, our access to Spamton's store will be forfeit. If we accept the transfer then Spanton and his store are wiped, leaving only an empty room behind. Now we have completed all steps necessary to unlock the Spamton Neo fight, so head back to the ominous derelict robot in the underground railroad tunnel and reinsert the disc. At first it seems like nothing much happens, but shortly after leaving this room, Spamton shows up in his new robot body. His actions are highly unsettling, as he is consumed by his newfound power. Here is his full cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> 
just like in Undertale, Chris's determination takes on the form of a yellow heart, able to shoot projectiles during this battle. It will be interesting to see how this ties into the greater story of Deltarune as future chapters release. For now, sit back and enjoy my personal run against this boss.
Now, depending on how we beat Spamton using violence or acts of mercy does slightly change the cutscene featured after the battle comes to a close. Here are both endings for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
After the cutscene ends, a new one plays out. We find ourselves in the second railroad tunnel and discover Spamton has been no more than a puppet for a greater evil this entire time. He no longer seems infected and speaks more clearly now. Asserting that perhaps we can break our own strings and then offering to become our strength as he provides the party with a powerful new item before fading from existence. Okay, so we've unlocked and battled Spamton, but who is this character and what's his story? Well, things are very vague in typical Deltarune fashion. However, we are given just enough information to put together a rough character profile. Spamton exists in Cyberworld, which is a dark world representation of the internet. His role in this internet-themed world was that of a spam email puppet account, hence his name. Desperate to be recognised and find success, Spamton began accepting any kind of deal he could until one day he received an ominous phone call that granted him instant success. It is hinted that this deal occurred in 1997, as Spamton frequently references this as his favourite year. Spamton's friends noted that he was on the phone all the time, and seemed to be assisted in his newfound glory. Over time, Spamton lost his friends as they grew resentful of his success. He moved into a room within the Queen's Mansion, where he would brag about his deals all day long. Much as we see him do when speaking with Chris. Then one day his mysterious caller vanished, and with it, so did Spamton's success. A fallen man corrupted by greed, Spamton was evicted from the Queen's Mansion, now no more than a washed up salesman, which is how we find him in the dumpster in town. But before he left, Spamton received one last phone call, and with that call, he too vanished. His friends found no more than an empty receiver, and on the other end of a phone, what's described as garbage noise. This noise is familiar to anyone who has made a phone call from Chris's cell phone during his time in the Dark World. This foreshadowing seems to suggest that it was Gaster on the phone, the dark entity from Undertale who lingers in the background of Deltarune's lore. Gaster is a dark influence with the power to corrupt those he encounters, including Chris. Still, there are other possibilities. Spamton also references a character known as Mike in this conversation here. It's an incredibly eerie moment, and one where we are warned to avoid Mike at all costs. So whether Mike is connected to Gaster or not, this is the name of at least one of Spamton's malicious callers most likely the original contact who brought him great success before vanishing and leaving him corrupted. After the garbage noise call, it seems Spamton became infected by a computer virus, which caused his speech patterns to grow confused and his thoughts to become erratic and violent. He was no longer in control of himself. 
We see this illustrated during this conversation here. On the surface, Spamton seems happy, but for a brief moment asks if anyone can hear him, requesting help. Under this control, Spamton acts as a malware, tempting the player into following his every command until he has full access and can take control of a more powerful form. Spamton hoped that by moving to a more powerful body, he could escape his puppet master Mike's control. But found, to his dismay, the strings were still, quite literally, attached. This transfer only corrupted him further. What is most interesting about our interactions with Spamton, however, are his references to the aforementioned Mike character. Warning, Chris, don't believe anything you see on TV. The man's a criminal, I tell you. A criminal. Why is this interesting? Well, at the very end of Deltarune Chapter 2, Chris is influenced while watching TV to open up a third fountain between the dark and light worlds. After doing this, on the static of the television screen, we see an ominous smile appear. It is very likely this smile belongs to Mike, the very entity who corrupted Spamton, meaning our previous interactions with him were a foreshadowing of the sinister events yet to come. On that creepy thought, I'll leave you to consider the greater story ramifications of Spamton and Mike's influence for yourselves. I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative, and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.